Again, uh, this time I got a few people with me, and my brother-in-law just found this broke arrowhead. So it's got, you can see the notching on the back. That's pretty sweet. It was up under a rock he just flipped over, so. So we'll see if we find anything else cool. drainage or something but in one of these boulders so it's not from around here there's some kind of I don't know if it's uh, like a calyx from a crinoid or something else I'm gonna try to pop it out of there and see if I can take it home hang on all right so here it is at least in a smaller chunk, I can work on it more later. <laughs> nice little horn coral. Alrighty, found something else cool. Got a nice little clean, what I hope to be, whole brachiopod. Looks good. Some kind of platystrophia, I believe. There's a, uh, let me zoom out. Plesiopod. There's all kinds of stuff everywhere. Alrighty. Alrighty, we're checking out some uh, pretty cool brachiopods. Here's a nice plate with a bunch of raffinosquina on it. Uh, here's some, where'd they go? Oh, up here. Um, nice big one. those clean up super well there's another big one so these were all just kind of found right around here I'm just weathering out of these rocks all right here we go another piece of nautiloid cephalopod I haven't found as much as this lately I think I've kind of picked it over here found the first little trilobite do you see it? Oh, I don't even see it. There we go. Yeah. I don't know if it's whole. It's tiny. Right in the, uh... mm, maybe. Yeah, it looks whole. Okay, it cleaned off a little bit. Yep. A little rolled up trilobite. Bunch of bryozoan that's weathered out. Here's a bunch of little neat uh, brachiopods. Tiny, but super clean. Just all these loose bryozoan chunks. Here's a piece of cephalopod with a bryozoan on the outside. You find that occasionally. Another cool little Brachiopod, you can see just all the detail. There would have been a hole there where the pedicle came out. So I'm finding some cool stuff. We'll uh, keep looking. All these little brachiopods weathered out right here. All right, just found another piece, just like this, of that cephalopod. Looks to be, uh, yes, coated with um, a bryzoan. Is that coming out clear? So here's this piece, and then the piece 
Uh, my dad actually found the other piece. Here it is. This one's got a little bit more noticeable texture to it. So those are both really cool. And there's a pile of that brachiopods right there. I'll go find my bag. I've lost it. Alright, here's another neat... This is a genal spine of an isotelus, I'm guessing. So this would have come around here. And then this section here, this would have th started the thorax pieces. And this spine kind of comes down along each side. And when they would roll up, that spine kind of sticks out. And they think that's what was kind of a defense mechanism. Uh, be harder for a big cephalopod to crunch them up with those spines. At least that's what they think. So that's kind of neat. It doesn't, you know, it's not a very good example. But a lot of times, you you know, they just get busted up pretty easy because they're fragile. All right, I'm on a roll with these bryozoan covered cephalopod pieces. I only think I got two or three at home with bryozoan on it, and I've found three just here in this last little stretch. This would have been a bigger, a bigger specimen. Can't wait to get that one cleaned up. Also, as usual, lots of little fragments of everything. Digging in this rubble is just so cool. Pull out these nice little, you know, that's got front and back valve, or the brachial valve and the pedicle. Oh, here's a piece of, oh, a piece of cephalopod chunk. That's a clip there. <laughs> some more. I'll check back if I find anything else. All right, found a couple more cool things here. Let me see if I can get it in focus. Big piece of nautiloid cephalopod. Here's a pelasiopod. The internal mold. A lot of times there, you don't see the, uh, Really, the shell too much. It's just kind of an internal mold of. See, it would have had both halves. But it's really worn. A lot of times you just find these as internal molds and it's just kind of a shape, a general shape. I still like them. If they've got both halves, a lot of times I'll pick them up. These two pieces, there was something else I thought. Oh, another chunk of cephalopod. Nice little horn coral. Alright, this is kind of interesting. It looks to be a piece of cephalopod that's just a bunch of pieces. Some more of it down here. Some up here even. So this thing would have just come loose and just busted it all apart. I don't know, I might collect them up. I don't know what i do with it. Probably put it back together, I guess. Cool nonetheless. I don't know where it looks like it was up in the mud right there. Hard to say how far it went back. Cool. Just found something pretty cool. Can you see it? Dang, nice trilobite. It's probably whole. Uh, I can probably prep that out. Sorry about that. All right, 
right, looks good. Alrighty, folks, I just want to do a quick wrap up of our hunt. Some cephalopod pieces. These three are very nice. I love the uh, bryozoan. Bryozoan is kind of, they're not really a coral, they're similar to a coral. It's um, a creature, they would kind of encrust these cephalopod shells and actually live on. And here's, got this book for reference, here's kind of a picture, a drawing of what a cephalopod would have looked like. So there's the cone shell, these lines or uh, chambers are uh, what you're seeing in there. In the end is this living chamber where the creature actually uh, lived. So as they, here's kind of a, what they think they looked like. It's this big long cone shell and in the end this uh, kind of squid-like creature would protrude out the end. So that's what a cephalopod would have looked like. Um, what you find are these kind of pieces um, of the shell and these are internal molds so this would have been uh, like the fossilized chambers so they would chambers kind of would have filled up with mud and that would have been fossilized and the shell would have washed away so here's kind of a what I believe is the living chamber so here you can see the segments the lines come all the way up and stop and then there's this kind of shape here that would have been the the living chamber so the creature would actually reside here the tentacles and head would have poked out this direction and that shell would have went all the way down to a point so you don't find them uh, very large most of the time you just find these little sections <clears throat> and sometimes bryozoan colonies would encrust the entire shell and that's what you get here So, and you know the animal was alive when the bryozoan encrusted it because it wraps all the way around. If the animal would have died and the shell would have been laying on the seafloor and bryozoan would have encrusted it then, you know, only the surface that was, uh, or the top surface would be encrusted. You'd be able to flip it over and see, okay, this side was down because it's against the seafloor. So enough about those. Um, here's some internal molds of uh, some gastropods or snail shells. They're not very good. I just pick them up anyways. Um, some crinoid columns. This uh, piece of cephalopod was all disarticulated. Uh, all these different uh, segments here, and these were kind of loose. They're pretty fragile, so I, you know, they didn't really go back together that well. Here's that uh, broke arrowhead. Just the base. Uh, Brother-in-law found this. Of course, some nice horn coral. I can't help but pick that stuff up. Some of the first fossils I ever uh, had as a kid were horn coral, and still pick them up today. There's a couple of trilobite faces there and there. It's kind of the internal mold of a big plesiopod. What else do I got here? There's the underside of a trilobite. The head would have been up here. It's rather incomplete. Um, this is just See that M shape right there? That's one of the thorax segments of a trilobite. Here's our trilobite. You've got a tail section. You've got your head section, and then in the center here's your thorax. Uh, when this thing molts its uh, shell, or sheds its shell, or when it dies, uh, a lot of times it falls apart, and this, the head stays together, the tail section stays together. In the center, this thorax, each one of those 
um, kind of disarticulates or it falls apart. So on the bottom of the seafloor, you have these hash plates, and this is, I've showed uh, better examples in other videos, but that little M there, doot, 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 that little M is one of those sections or one of those seg uh, thorax segments loose or disarticulated. So you can find hash plates where, here's one, where there's just lots of uh, those little thorax segments disarticulated everywhere. All right, so you've got right there that one, that piece, that piece, there's another one buried there, there. Those are all the uh, thorax disarti disarticulated pieces. Uh, those are the head pieces, or the face, I guess. There's another one. Um, right there is the side of a cheek on the head. There's another piece hiding down there. I don't think there are many tail sections on this thing. I'm sure there's one somewhere, but... Okay, um, Bryce Owen. Pretty typical to find a lot of that. This was just kind of a big chunk. It has, um, so it was kind of neat. I like these big, chunky pieces of Bryce Owen. Thin raffinous glue now. This was out of that land, I call them a landscape boulder, but it was like a big pile of uh, big rocks, maybe the size of a basketball or smaller, um, kind of in a drainage area where they were trying to keep the dirt from eroding, and a lot of times you find little uh, crinoid pieces. Here's a, hard to tell um, in the video, but there's lots of little crinoid stem bits in there, but this, I believe, is a calyx cup, a crinoid cup, it would have been, I think, oriented like this, and this part is kind of messed up, but there would have been the stem coming down, and the little feathered arms, the arms with the pinules on them would have come out of this top section, so I don't know for sure. There's a little part of an Isotelus hypostome. Here's a... Um, same thing, only much bigger. So this would have been just one side of the same thing. If I can get it in view here. Okay, you see this? Head here, spine, spine, you got this head piece that comes around. Now this is rolled up, so its tail is flipped up under. But here it is again. You got this spine that goes down and down. That's one of those spines there. There's another one there. Here's another one here. So this would have gone around, there would have been another one on the, each side. some kind of trace fossils. Would have been like the cast of burrows. Here's a little plesiopod, both, uh, both uh, valves. 
Just an internal mold, you know, these are pretty worn out usually. A little brachiopod. I like this guy, he's pretty cool. Okay. Don't want to forget about this little guy. It's that little rolled up trilobite. Some damage on that cheek. All right, and here's the trilobite. I found right at the end of the hunting clips. This was actually found. Not on the same exact trip, um, I just threw the clip on the end of this video because I didn't have any other clips with it. But it was found about a week prior. Same location. So, and I obviously uh, have prepped it out some. Removed quite a bit of the rock matrix and still needs some work. But he's good for now. So that sums it about up. Um, hope everyone has had a great year. Hope uh, you guys are enjoying these videos. Um, we'll see you guys. Take it easy.